I had to come to the realization that maybe the peace that I was so proud to develop in my life wasn't actually real peace. I was just left for so long in the comfort of my solitude, unchallenged, that I mistook it for peace. And it's easy to hold peace when you're unchallenged. And if I wanted to get to something real within myself, I had to get real and honest about the lack of patience that I actually did have. In too many ways, it felt like I was running, running away from growth, running away from the truth within myself that was so easy to hide behind my solitude. I'm practicing peace for real this time, not for show, but because I think in the next stage and chapter in my life, I won't be able to balance all of it without real patience. And maybe when people acknowledge the peace that they feel when they encounter me or watch my videos, I won't feel like such an imposter or that it's some performance of kindness and not real grace and acceptance and patience. In this video, I will discuss better practices for patience in ways my lack of patience has affected me negatively in hopes that what I share is somehow of service to you. Let's get started. Becoming slow to respond. I needed to slow down. If you were someone that grew up with a fast reacting parent, especially when things were done wrong, to them, their first reaction was probably their best reaction, and no matter how aggressive or accusatory it may seem, because there was no one in their life to challenge their methods, we just assumed that because they were the adults, this behavior is normal, or somehow a part of parenthood, and eventually it manifests in our lives in the way that we express ourselves. I was impatient. And because my reactions were so fast, everyone could see how much or how easy it was for me to be affected. And this affected me negatively because outside of the words that I spoke or my integrity as a woman or the positive relationships that I was developing, once they saw how thin my patience was, to them I was a ticking time bomb or someone that they needed to watch out for. I was often misunderstood and also powerless in the eyes of my enemies. Because if something so small warranted this much of a reaction, who knows what would happen if something serious or more severe happened, or what I would do in those situations. So outside of this guard of being a strong woman, I was often an easy target for sabotaging. They knew that they could get the right reaction out of me, and I became predictable. And for someone like me, who's a Virgo Sun Scorpio Moon, I couldn't stand that. The best thing I probably could have ever done was realize the amount of ammo I was giving my enemies by my fast reactions to things. Now I'm more intentional about saving my reactions in my alone time. Not to hide being a full human and expressing myself, but because in that time I could process it and assess it for the truth of what it was in the moment. To eventually give it a worthy response. Not to say every response that I made was perfect, because I am not perfect. But in that time of slowing down, I gave myself enough time to develop a strategy to eventually get my desired outcome, righteous or not. And that's just being real. You know the saying, be careful of the nice ones? Unfortunately, I feel like I was the reason why that saying was the thing, because being nice or being a kind person warrants disrespect and people assume that you're naive because you choose not to stoop to a person's level. But in my opinion, before I was stronger in the mind, I used that to my advantage to seek revenge. And I assumed that if I played my role long enough to destroy my enemies so tactfully, they wouldn't even realize that the demise that they had was from my own hands. And I would have this silent win. I would wait years for the perfect moment. And that type of relentless revenge it's not cute, it's not in alignment with the type of woman that I wanted to be, and it wasn't helping me. I wasn't growing as a better woman by keeping that as a part of my character. And I'm sharing this not because I'm proud of that, but because I think there is just much I should let go of. And by being honest, I give room for others to be honest with themselves, enough to not parade around as if we are someone that we're not. And how do I expect to grow in moments like these if I'm not real about who I am when others aren't watching? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And if I wanted to feel the peace of finally being heard, 
I had to develop the patience to listen to others and hold space for others just as much as I wanted it. I'm so used to people in my life selfishly, only able to listen to the parts that made them correct, only were able to hear their own justice, and the minute someone has another perspective that involves them not being a hero or a victim of the story, they turn completely deaf. And I realize now that I have no power to change those people, but it doesn't mean I have to change the story to make them comfortable. But I guess it takes being in situations where I feel completely unheard to know what it takes to help others feel heard. And when I slow down and I have the patience to listen with an open heart, I'm able to have better conversations and let go of my grudges. Because even if they don't agree, at least we hurt each other. I needed to discover what being kind to myself really means just so I really understand my capabilities of being kind to others, giving grace to myself so I know when it's needed for others. I know this may sound off topic, but I promise it is. I have terrible road rage. I don't know what it is, but anytime I get behind the wheel, everyone just turns into an idiot. And the road rage, I think, stems from a fear of driving. And I've said this in a video a while back, but I believe in a past life, I got into a car accident that left me severely damaged and it led to my death. So ever since I was a child, anytime my mom would strap me in a car seat or in the car, I would kick and scream and like completely scream very wildly as if someone was murdering me. It's I have no trust to anyone on the road because I'm aware enough to know having the fear has nothing to do with trust of the person driving, but just the acceptance that mistakes happen. And so many people lose their lives as a consequence of someone's simple mistake. And it's complex, but it's really real. But anyway, this past year in my old car, people just kept hitting my car. Someone backed into it while I was parked somewhere someone else hit it while i was in a drive through sideswiping and i'm like what why is this happening but i think i needed to experience those things to keep in mind that mistakes happen as much as i feel obligated to justice after a mistake that affects me i'm not obligated to it and sometimes stuff happens and if i'm patient enough i'll see that i make a lot of mistakes too and bottom line, our mistakes are not a representation of who we are or our value. So I have to give room for others to make mistakes and be patient and knowing that I make mistakes too. Also, I'm trying to discover ways to reward myself out of kindness. I think being kind to ourselves and doing things that we enjoy is one thing, but it's like, how can I show appreciation and gratitude for myself? And the minute that I learn and discover how to do that, I kind of open the door for people that love and appreciate me to do the same. So I will be getting a facial soon, and I also have a hair appointment scheduled because it is time for a haircut. It's about that time. And I want to know what are ways that you're being kind to yourself. Give me some ideas of more things that I could do that could probably just kind of reward myself or give myself some appreciation for just doing the best that I can in this season of my life, you know? Also, what are ways that you're practicing patience? Can you recall a situation in your life where you just realize that you are not patient enough to handle the situation? I realized as an instructor that the reason why I chose that task, the reason why I chose that profession is because I'm really not patient at all. And when you are an instructor, it kind of forces you to be patient in ways you would not even imagine. And some days I have more patience than others. Some days I sound completely ridiculous over the microphone where I'm just like so direct. I don't have any more patience left in me. And it's very humbling and it's also pretty funny <laughs> because I want to say that I do all of this work and that I'm this always trying to be this elevated version of myself. But if one person doesn't point their toe, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I am very triggered, <laughs> I don't know, um, but yeah, 
Anyway, that is all I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope this video was of service for you in any way. If so, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.